this video, we will talk all about normal distributions and how to find areas under normal distribution curves. But before we get into normal distributions, let's talk about density curves. Density curves are just models for data. They're mathematical models used to describe the shape of distributions of data. There are only two requirements to be in the density curve club. A curve has to be on or above the horizontal axis, and all the area under the curve has to add up to one. So there's lots of different curves out there that meet these two requirements. Here's some examples. So all of these curves could be used as density curves, or in other words, they could be used to model actual data. In real life, uh, we want to pick a curve that follows the pattern that our histogram might look like. And in real life, some patterns appear more frequently than others. And one pattern that appears a lot is this bell-shaped curve, single peak, symmetric, and bell-shaped. And we call this one the normal distribution. Normal distributions frequently appear in things like business, nature, medicine, psychology, education. They show up all over the place. They're very common. Uh, and because of that, we focus a lot on normal distributions in our class, even though there are a lot of other density curves out there. If we know the mean and standard deviation of a normal distribution, then we know exactly what that normal distribution looks like. If we want to answer questions about data that follows a normal distribution, then we just need to find the area under the curve that corresponds to what we want to find out. One way that we can do that is using this handy rule called the 68959997 rule. This rule only applies to normal or uh, very close to normal bell-shaped distributions. And what the rule says is that approximately 68% of the data will be within one standard deviation of the mean. So in other words, if I take the value of mu and I add and subtract one standard deviation, between those two numbers, we would expect to see 68% of the data. It also says that approximately 95% of the data will be within two standard deviations of the mean, and approximately 99.7% of the data will be within three standard deviations of the mean. So using this rule, we can pretty quickly and easily determine some general areas underneath the normal distribution curve. So let's look at how we would do that. Scores on the SAT verbal section are normally distributed with a mean mu equals to 504 and standard deviation sigma equals 111. So using this information, we can get a picture of exactly what this distribution looks like. So we know, according to our rule, backing up here, that 99.7, or pretty much the entire distribution, is encompassed within three standard deviations of the mean. So that's why in my picture over here, the entire curve is kind of enclosed within the mean plus or minus three standard deviations. And if we mark off distances that are a distance of one standard deviation away, doing that three times in either directions, we can get a good picture of this distribution. So what I would do is I would start right here in the middle with 504, that's my mean, and then I'm gonna add the value of one standard deviation, which is 111. 504 plus 111 is 615. And then if I add another 111, that's gonna make this 726. And add another 111, that gives me 837. Going the other direction, I'm gonna take 504 minus the value of one standard deviation. So 504 minus 111 gives me 393. Minus another 111 gives me 282. And minus another 111 gives me 171. So this gives me a breakdown of where the scores are on the SAT verbal exam. And now we're set to answer some questions about it. So here's the first question. What percent of students score between 393 and 615? So 393 is right here, 615 is right here. You can see that both of those are one standard deviation away from the mean, and we know that within one standard deviation of the mean or between 393 and 615, we're gonna have 68% of the data. So the answer is 68%. What percent of students score between 282 and 726? 
Well, looking at my picture here, I can see that 282 is here, 726 is up here. These are two standard deviations away from the mean in either direction. And I know that between plus or minus two standard deviations, we have 95% of the data. So 95% of students score between 282 and 726. And what percent of students score between 171 and 837? Well, by now you've got this down. You can see that these are three standard deviations away from the mean. And the percent of observations within three standard deviations is 99.7%, or nearly everybody. All right, so let's get a little trickier with our questions. What percent of students score above 615? 615 is right here. We're looking for above, so we just want all this red shaded in area over here. Now we can actually answer this question using the rule. If we kind of think of the rule as a little bit of a, a puzzle, we're trying to figure out how to break down the pieces of the puzzle. So first I want to ask myself, what do I know about 615? Well, 615 is one standard deviation away from the mean. And I know that between 393 and 615, I've got 68% of the observations. I also know that this entire curve, the whole thing, has to add up to 100% or 1, because remember, that was one of the requirements to be in the density curve club, is that the area under the curve had to add up to 1, or in other words, 100%. So, if I take 100 minus 68, that gives me 32%. Now that 32% is all the stuff that's not in blue on here. So it's gonna be everything from 393 and lower, plus everything from 615 and higher. Now in my particular case, I just wanna know above 615. Well, because this is symmetric, you can see that um, below 393 is just a mirror image of above 615. I can take the area that's in both of those pieces and divide it by two to get the area that is just in the above 615 part. So I end up with 16%. So what percent of students score above 615? 16%. Here's another one. What percent of students score below 282? So below 282, that's this little tail down in here. So again, I say, well, what do I know about 282? Well, 282 is two standard deviations below the mean. And what do I know about points within two standard deviations? Well, I do know that between 282 and 726, there's 95% of all the observations. So if the whole thing, again, is 100, I can take 100 minus 95. Sorry, my computer pen is not my friend all the time. Let me try again. So 100 minus 95 equals 5%. So that 5% is going to be, be split on either side but between the area less than 282 and the area greater than 726. So we have these two pieces here. I really only care about one of those pieces, the below 282 piece. So I can take that percentage, and because these are mirror images of each other, I can divide that in half. So I get 5 over 2, which is 2.5%. So the answer would be 2.5%. Here's another question. What percent of students score below 450? Well, looking at my picture here, 450 is, I don't know, somewhere right in here. And uh, based on what I know so far, what do I know about 450? Eh, well, not a lot. It's not a value that is exactly one, two, or three standard deviations away from the mean. So I'm not going to be able to use just the 68, 99.7 rule to answer this question. I'm going to have to do something a little bit more. So what we do when we can't just use kind of the quick and easy way using the rule well, first option is calculus, but, and, and I'm assuming most of you have not taken calculus as a prerequisite for this class, and even if you have, you'd probably rather not dig up that old material. 
So option two is gonna to be to find the z-score and then use the normal applet. First step is finding the z-score. We find the z-score by taking x minus the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. So the result is this value that's called the z-score and a z-score tells you how many standard deviations your point is from the mean. It's kind of, we call it standardizing. Um, because instead of measuring in original like test score units, now we're measuring in number of units of standard deviations away from the mean. Z-scores that are less than negative two or above positive two are going to indicate an unusual point, something that doesn't occur very frequently, less than 5% of the time. So let's think about our problem here. We wanna know what percent of students score below 450. So my first step is gonna be to find that Z-score. So first I find x, so x is the value that they give you in the problem that we're interested in, that the question is about. That's 450 in this case. I'm gonna subtract the mean, which they're always gonna tell you what that is, mu, and divide by standard deviation, in this case, which was 111. So if I take 450 minus 504 divided by 11, 111, then I get negative 0.486. So that tells me that 450 is negative 0.486 standard deviations below the mean. Below because it's negative. The next step to finding the area is to use the normal probability applet. Um, to do this, you're just going to enter your z-score, shade the appropriate area, and then you're gonna have your answer. How do you know how to shade? Well, if the question is asking for less than, then you're gonna shade everything to the left of your z-score. And if the question is asking for greater than, you're gonna shade everything to the right of your z-score. So here's our problem here. We got a z-score of negative 0.486. That is a negative z-score, so I enter it in the box on the negative z-score side here. And I was looking for scores below 450, that's less than, so that means I'm gonna shade everything to the left of my z-score. And once I've entered the z-score shaded correctly, then the area up here is my answer. So what percent of students score below 450? Well, 0.3135, or in other words, 31.35%. Let's look at another one. What percent of students score above 700? So same process. First, we're gonna find the z-score by taking x minus mu divided by sigma. So the x that we're looking at, that's the one in question in our problem here, the 700 in this case. And then, of course, the mean and standard deviation are the same as in the previous problem. So we're gonna take 700 minus 504 divided by 111, which equals 1.766. Then I'm gonna head over to the normal probability applet, and I'm gonna enter my z-score into the applet. This one was a positive z-score, so we enter it into the box on the right. In this case, I was interested in the area above 700, Above means greater than, so I'm gonna shade everything to the right of that z-score. So once I've entered that in, shaded correctly, then the value in the area box is my answer. So what percent of students score above 700? Well, about 3.87%. Here's another type of problem that you're gonna see with these normal distributions. This one asked, what is the 90th percentile for SAT scores? So notice how this one is a little bit different. In the previous two problems, we were given an x value, like 450 or 700, and your answer was a percentage. In this one, we're given a percent, and our answer is going to be a test score. I call it a backwards normal problem. And it's backwards because we're essentially just gonna work everything in reverse. So starting with this 90th percentile, we're gonna to go to the applet first. In the applet, you wanna shade first and then enter in the area. So I'm gonna write that down, shade first. If you shade first, it just makes there be less errors later on. Because sometimes when you start messing with things on the applet, you might not realize that it's changing numbers in other areas. So just to save yourself any potential hassle, shade first. And how do you know how to shade? Well, if it's less than the 50th percentile, shade just the left side. And if it's greater than the 50th percentile, then you're gonna shade the left and the middle. 
So in this case, we had the 90th percentile. 90 is greater than 50th percentile, so we shaded both the left side and the middle section here. So once I had those shaded, next step is to enter the area or the percentile into the area box up here as a decimal, of course. So I put in my area as 0 .90 for the 90th percentile. And once I've done that, then I'm gonna grab the z-score from down below. And you're always grabbing the z-score from you know, where the blue area ends and the white area starts. So the z-score that I want here is a positive 1.282. Now recall our z-score formula, z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. So now in this backwards problem, I know what z is, I know what mu and sigma are, and it's x that I need to solve for. So I'm gonna plug everything into the formula that I know. So I'll have 1.282 equals x minus 504 over 111, and then I can just solve for x. So multiply both sides by 111, then add 504 to both sides, and I get an x value of 646.302. So to be in the 90th percentile for SAT scores, you would have to score at least 646.302. Okay, there's one more type of problem that you're gonna see with these normal distributions. These are what I call the between problems. So same scenario with the SAT verbal scores. This time we wanna know what percent of students score between 400 and 650. What's different about the between problems is that instead of being given one x value, you're given two x values. So we have 400 and 650. And we're interested in the area in between those. So here's kind of the overall strategy of what we're gonna do here. So we said we're looking at 400, which is kind of over here, and 650, which is somewhere over here and we wanna know the area in between. So we're looking at this area in here. Now using our applet, we can't like Im immediately jump to this particular area the way that our applet is set up. So what our strategy is gonna be is to find the area less than the larger number. So in this case, 650 was our larger number. I'm gonna find the area all the way to the left of 650. Then I'm gonna find the area to the left of the smaller number. So in this case, the area to the left of 400. So then if I take the big area minus that little area, then I'll be left with just that in-between area, which is exactly what I'm trying to find. So let's do that. So I start by finding the z-score for the bigger number. So my bigger number was 650, so I take 650 minus 504 divided by 111, and that should say equals, um, equals 1.315. Okay, then I'm going to find the z-score for the smaller number, which in this case was the 400. So same thing, 400 minus 504 divided by 111 equals negative 0.937. So now I have both my z-scores. Now I'm gonna find the area to the left of both of those z-scores separately using the normal applet. So starting with the big one here, the 1.315, I enter that positive number in there, and I'm gonna take note of the area there, that's the area, that's the big area, the area to the left of my big number. I'm gonna do the same thing with my smaller number, so I enter in the z-score for the smaller number, shade in everything to the left. That's gonna tell me that smaller area um, to the left of my smaller number there. Now, I'm gonna take the big area, subtract the little area, and that's gonna give me that in-between area. So I have 0 0.9057 for the big area, 0 0.1744 for the small area, and that gives me an in-between area of 0.7313, or in percentages that would be 73.13%. And now you have it. That's how you find areas under normal distribution curves.